we are going to start in Isaiah 40. Um, this morning is going to be pretty much on just trusting God, His timing. Um, what started the whole thing was, is you know, He shall those that wait upon the Lord, He shall renew their strength. You know, if we just wait for God's timing, God will make all things work out. We have to just trust Him more than we do man. So, if you have your Bibles, Isaiah 40. I'm going to start on in verse 6, and I'm going to jump around a little bit. But here we go, Isaiah 40. What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as a flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Listen to that. The word of our God shall stand forever. That's why you can put your trust in this. You don't worry about the rotation of the earth. You don't worry about whether the sun is going to come up or not. Why? Because you know it's just going to happen. Well, the God who keeps that in order is also the God that wants to be involved in every little part of your life. He wants to be a part of the little things as much as the big things. It goes on and says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and metered out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in balance? Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, has taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as small as a dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. There is nothing this world can offer that's big enough for our God. But yet that mighty God dearly loves you. He made you like no other. You're not here by mistake. You're not listening to this by mistake. The Spirit of the Lord is drawing you. God Almighty wants to have a true personal relationship with you. He wants you to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that you can call upon Him, that He loves you. We have to learn to trust God's timing. We have to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that when we are weak, He will give us strength. When it seems impossible, God will make a way. See, we think of things in the natural God see things from a different perspective. It says, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold and casteth silver chains. Remember, the idol worship was something very common there and it still is in many parts of the world they have all these graven images all these things that they worship the sun the moon the stars you know skip all that <laughs> go straight to the creator of all those things and know that he dearly loves you you don't need an in-between it's you and him because of what Jesus did on Calvary if you've accepted Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life you are now a child of the Almighty God, and He truly cares after you. It says, He that is so impoverished that he hath no ob oblation chooses a tree that will not rot. In other words, if they don't have money for silver and gold, they make idols out of wood that they can do. 
Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that brings the princesses to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their so stalks shall not take root in the earth. And she, he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. The greatest of men one day return to dust. To whom then will you liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest that, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. You know, some people think that they can get away from God's punishment, that they can hide their sins from God. God sees it all. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. See, if you're feeling faint, you feel like you have no power, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall fail and be weary, and the young men shall early fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Matthew 28, 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Those things are written in this word. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 1 Peter 5 says, Humble yourselves therefore into the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. This is something I wrote down. In verse 7 it says, Casting all your care upon him, he careth for you. You can cast all your care upon him. And then I wrote down, Don't try to fix it yourself, looking at the world for help. Let God lead you. Do not act because of fear. Wait for the peace of the Lord and then respond. So don't act in fear because you're being afraid of something. You jump into to doing something that they've told you you should do. Wait. Seek God first. And when you have the peace of the Lord, then respond. But don't respond out of fear. Verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists, resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Don't think that you're alone having troubles and difficulties. We have brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. It's part of being in this world. One day we'll be out of it, but for now... We're stuck here and we're going to have problems. But we have to learn to cast our cares upon the Lord. We have to learn to trust His timing, knowing that He has our best as His interest. It says, To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. I want to give you some scriptures real quick about not fearing. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. 
For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? 2 Timothy 1.7 For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. In other places it says in a sound mind, you have self-control. Your flesh may want to do something, and for a moment you may start yielding that way, but you have the authority in the name of Jesus, and you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you to say, no, I am not going to go back to the trash that God took me out of. I am going to continue my path toward the things that God has prepared for me in glory. And you make up your mind that that's what's going to do. It doesn't matter whether you stumble on the way. You're going to keep going toward the Lord. Philippians 4 says, We learn to say as Paul, and I said this, and we learn as it says in Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I wrote this down. And we will rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God has your soul in his care. This old flesh is just that. Flesh that withereth away like the grass. Like we started back in Isaiah 40. Withereth away like the grass. All good deeds like the flowers that fade away. But our God... He is eternal and He is preparing eternal wonderful things for us. So just hang on to Jesus. Even if you're sinking like Peter was in the water and he reached up for Jesus' hand, reach up. He is there to grab your hand and pull you out of whatever situation has you feeling like you're drowning. He is the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no one greater than our God, and he dearly loves you. So why put faith in man and not in God? Put faith in God. Don't worry about what man's way says. What does God's way says? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but through me. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrecting God. So you can keep that praise song in your heart and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, God Almighty so dearly loves you. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday, church. So if you can join us in person, we would love to have you at 1030 in the morning is our worship. 11 o'clock, we start the, the live stream, the preaching part. And our services are not long, 11.30, 11.45, um, we are done. We are casual atmosphere, but we do not compromise the word. We have some coffee and sodas in, in the morning when you come in, if you come a little early. And afterwards, you hang out a little bit, that's, you're welcome to. It's like if you're coming into our living room, and that's the feel that we want you to have. You're coming to the house of God to be with brothers and sisters in Christ. It's such a blessing to be able to do that in a country that we don't have to worry about the government saying, oh, you can't have worship and shutting our doors. So take advantage of the freedom that we have to be able to go into the house of the Lord and worship our mighty God with your brothers and sisters in Christ, whether at our church or a home church. Go to church somewhere that's preaching the true word of God that's using this as their guideline, not man's ways. We'll see you tomorrow or Monday morning at 7 a.m.